How to prepare your data for machine learning. This is the second video in a sequence on complete data science project walkthrough and today we're going to speak about data pre-processing and feature engineering. If you haven't seen the previous video, we're using a real estate prices prediction project as an example as we go along. You might have heard the phrase garbage in, garbage out. This refers to relevance and correct representation of data to predict a certain outcome. Assume that with our previous step we made sure the data is relevant. Now we need to represent or better yet transform the data in a way that would reflect dependencies between features and target which could be easily picked up by the model. And the first step would be to clean the data. You can start with outliers removal. If we stick with our real estate prices prediction example, then you might want to look at the distribution of homes prices and other variables for that matter. If 99% of your data represents homes between 100k and 300k and only 1% are extremely expensive or extremely cheap, then you might want to remove those examples from your data because they don't provide statistical representation of the market prices. Those are just some outliers that can mess up your statistics and provide irrelevant examples for your model. Another example of data cleaning could be spotting and removing errors. A perfectly normal numeric column can be identified as text if only one value within this column contains text. This might have been an input error. For example, when collecting the data they always say not available when the data is missing. Or someone could have just sat on the keyboard and the text appeared there by accident. Either way, any text from a numeric column must be cleaned out. And the best bet would be to replace it with a missing value, an empty cell. This way Python would understand this numeric column with missing values correctly as a numeric data type. Then you need to deal with missing values. And there are quite a few ways to go about it. You can ignore them if there are just a few and a machine learning model that you're planning to use can handle the data with NANDs. Or you can impute them with simple statistics such as mean, median or mode. You can impute missing values by machine learning. This is a more advanced option and it usually yields the best results. You can check out my video on how to do this automatically. Or you can circle back to whomever collected the data and figure out what is the nature of missing values. An empty cell may mean that the value is actually zero and this is way more accurate far better than any other subjective imputation option. Whichever one you select, follow this sequence. Figure out what do missing values actually mean. Is it really missing or does it mean something else? Calculate the volume of missing data. A golden rule is that if over 50% of any column is missing, then you best drop this column altogether. And think about the model that you're going to be using later down the road which may or may not work on incomplete data set. Next, you need to understand data types, numeric, categoric, binary, text, date, time, which is also text. These are all different types of variables which require different processing. At the end, you'll need to have all your data in a numeric format. Let's go over them one by one. Correct encoding of categorical data is very important because it can either amplify the significance of this variable or it can completely confuse your model. There are many things to consider. If categories are represented by A, B and C for example, and if you choose to encode them with 0, 1 and 2, then later if you use a linear model, then it would understand values in this column as ordinal, where 2 would be greater than 1. But if those categories actually mean colors, then this would make no sense. Well, because white is not greater than green. In this case, you might want to select one hot encoding or mean target encoding for this column. There are many encoding options and all of them have certain caveats. If you don't know the nature of the data, then you might want to try different types of encoding on each column while validating the accuracy with your selected model. And this is a more robust approach. A quick and dirty option would be just to label encode everything and use light GBM. This may not provide you the best accuracy, but it will not result in misinterpretation of data by this type of model. Text data is much more tricky. It's a whole different dimension. If we continue our example project and if you see a column with arbitrary house description as plain text, then the first thing I would do is just try to ignore this column altogether and train my model on all the other structured features. In most cases, this would be enough. If not, then you can transform your text into embeddings or a TF-IDF matrix and append those as additional features. Date time should be treated as a very important feature because technically this indicator encapsulates all the events that happened all over the world at that point in time. Whatever you train to predict may be sensitive to changes in time. 
If your target is bathing suit sales forecast, then it is obvious that they go up in summer rather than in the winter. Coffee is sold in the morning and beer in the evening. You get the point. Python usually reads a daytime column as a string or text, and the most common approach would be just to break it down to, into its components and store them as new variables. Depending on time step format that you have, you may extract lots of new informative features. If you have two timestamp columns, figure out what do they mean. If they're connected, then you might want to create a time diff column and just represent the difference between the two timestamps as a separate feature. You can use the automatic date parser to do all of that for you. I'll put the link in the description below. A more creative part is feature engineering. That is creation of new variables from the ones you already have. And this means that you need to have a pretty good understanding of your data to do that. A simple multiplication or division of one variable by another can create a killer feature. Do you think that a price per square foot group by neighborhoods would be a good predictor of homes values? And if the nature of the variables is unknown, then you can just select the top 10 from the model's feature importance and recursively apply different operators to its pairs and validate them with the model. Let's conclude here and proceed to the next video for modeling and evaluation techniques.